All right, 61 year old male, history of portal vein thrombosis. Uh, he has never bled, but he was diagnosed with esophageal varices that have been treated with banding and also noted to have some gastric varices. And I'm not sure he has gastric fundal varices. He definitely has some gastric varices. And you can see on the endoscopic view here, there are these, uh, what could be interpreted as rugal folds, but I think there are varices here. Very thin diameter, uh, serpiginous gastric varices. And if we look with EUS, you can see tiny little worms inside of the superficial uh, deep mucosa and submucosa. Uh, these are all very small diameter and there's a multitude of them. And if we go towards the fundus, which is on the right side here, I'm just going to pull back. This is the angle of hiss. This is the cruce muscle. And we're now slipping back into the esophagus. And you're now looking through the esophagus here, the aryl. This is the esophageal mucosa. This is the cruce muscle. So it's the left limb of the right cruce muscle. This is the fundus mucosa. The fundus mucosa, this is the fundus that is filled with water, which is why the patient is intubated because we have to fill the stomach with water, the fundus in particular, so that we can see the fundus. And so if this patient has fundic varices, we would see varices here. And in fact, we don't see any varices here. So this patient does not have fundic varices. These are not fundic varices because we see none. But what he does have, as we push now towards the cardia here, he does have small gastric varices at the cardia. And you can see that they are around the circumference of the cardia on the opposite side of the fundus, which is on the left. You see lots of little varices, tiny little varices. So he has gastric varices, but they're all very small and one could argue for leaving these alone and not treating them because we really don't have any data to support treating these prophylactically, but they could be treated. And we've discussed this uh, with Luis Carlos about treatment. And so we've decided that we will do one injection. Uh, there is one spot that I thought might be a good candidate for treatment and that spot I think is probably, if we put the arrow on, okay, maybe here. So if you look at this varix here, I think there might be a feeder here. So if you can hit the feeder, then you might get the whole convolute of tiny worms that are more superficial. See all these little worms in there? And now I'm looking, so you see the MP here, muscularis propria, and you're looking for a feeder vessel that connects the collaterals, which are outside, the splenic, splenic artery is up here, co connects the collaterals with the varices. Varices are in the wall and collaterals are outside the wall. That's how we differentiate the two. So, so for demonstration's sake, I think this one is probably a feeder right here. See how this is outside? and it goes inside. You can see some flow in here. So let's see if we can just target this one. So the first step is to insert, and you have to use a 22 gauge needle for this. And uh, if you use a 19, it's too big. So we'll take the arrow off for a moment now. And let's just see if we can target. There's no room for a coil. If you measure the diameter, we measured it earlier, it was just three millimeters. Now there's the sheath. I'm going to pull the sheath back. You never want that sheath too far out. Just far out enough so that your needle doesn't puncture the working channel so that it crosses across the elevator. And now I'm going to advance the needle out a little bit just so I see the direction. There's the needle. You see it? Now I'm going to turn my body slightly looking for this one right here. Now I have 
Fleur, Floor, holding the scope. She's uh, my nurse here assisting me, and Dr. Gabriella is also assisting me. She's one of the staff here at the, at the hospital. So you can see I'm targeting this. If you mag up now, please mag up a couple of levels. We can really mag up to see this well and another level. All right, so I think this is just a nice example just to illustrate this one more time for you. There's the varics we're going to target. It's a fairly plump one, and the feeder vessel is there. But if we get the glue in here, it should also go into the feeder vessel. And I'm going to turn this ever so slightly. There we go. This is what I want. See? Now you can see this. And now let's see if we can get this. Now the way you d I do this is I will dial in. It's got to be a thrust and puncture in. And I've got a nice trajectory for my needle. And I've got about a s one centimeter dialed in. And the thumb screws are tight. And we'll just puncture in like that. See, now I'm in the varix. And we're gonna, the first step now is to aspirate. See if we get blood back, back, aspirate. And if we get blood back, we're good. If not, we have to, I have to adjust my position. No blood yet, so keep aspirating. I'm expecting blood, but we don't see any. Now what happens sometimes is you get tenting of the endol helium of the vessel and it plugs the needle so I'm 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 outside I'm not in the varix right so I got a puncture again like this and I'm actually may go through and then slowly pull back while you aspirate slowly pull back so this is no different than the way you try to get the radial artery right to place an a-line do you get blood now no no Oh, you got blood. You got blood. Now, now this, now the distilled water, please. Switch syringes. And when you inject, we should see this. We see, we should see bubbles. Bubbles, not gas, but bubbles. Okay. You don't want to inject any gas in there. You want water? Yes, water now. Go ahead. So we should see it. Tom, do you want to uh, mag up a little bit more? Are you injecting? It's 22. So you see it going in there, the bubbles? Yeah. Yes. All right, good. Now let's put the glue in. Okay, glue now, please. So that has to go fast. This is N-butyl 2. I use 2 octocyanoacrylate. Polymerizes much more slowly. But with this, we got to push that in pretty fast. Yeah, go ahead, push it. And then we got to inject what's in the dead space in there. So go ahead. And everyone should have eye protection. Okay, go ahead now and inject so that it doesn't spray. Put your hand across here so that if it sprays out, it doesn't go out. Go ahead and inject forcefully. Tom may have to help you. Sometimes you need a man, uh, a, a manpower. The problem with uh, N-butyl 2 is it polymerizes so fast and it's really hard to push through a 22 gauge needle so you, you, you no, I think that is, uh, looks like it already clogged yeah that's the problem yeah it, it, so, it so you have to like it has to happen right away because if you get any blood inside of the needle it it'll immediately clog because blood is ionic and it polymerizes this is why I don't use Sino, the N-butyl 2, right? Histol, I don't use it anymore because of this problem. If you had Dermabond or Exofin, these are the uh, trade names, then you wouldn't have this problem. But you have this problem now with... Uh... So I do strongly recommend that, uh, that you replace N-butyl 2 with 2-octal. Okay, so the needle is, so I got to pull out. I have no choice. And I don't know that it's really even worth pursuing this because to be honest, I, I, I don't think we have a strong indication for treating these. 
I think we stop because really it, we, it was more for demonstration, okay. but it's really hard to inject the n butyl 2 right, histoacryl, through a 22 gauge. You'll get away with a 19, but 19 is really hard for such, a, for such yes. small varices. So you have to use a 22 gauge needle. Oh no, I'm sure you'll get it because they use it in the um, emergency room yes. always for the, for the skin because the, uh, they don't like to use histoacryl because it, it solidifies too quickly. Whereas the, the, the Dermabond or the Exofin, you can wash off if you get it wrong, wrong spot. You can wash it off your hands. Otherwise, it sticks immediately. So it's better for the staff. I mean, all of these are potentially treatable, right? But they're everywhere. You know, you, you, you can't spend the next, you know, the next week going after each of these little varices. The important teaching point here is you have to be very, fundic varices are completely different from cardiovarices. Cardiovarices are like esophageal varices. They're very superficial. You know, and um, they are, they have a completely different um, pathophysiology. And, uh, and that's why they're treated differently. You can treat these varices, these cardia varices or junctional varices with banding. No problem. Very easily. The fundic varices, which are the ones that normally you would see here. Can you decrease the magnification? So if I show the arrow, this is the fundus. See? And if the patient has fundic varices, it would be big varices here. Here. And then you would go transesophageal. I like to go transcruel. And you would look for the feeder vessel, which would be here. In here. Right? This is the muscularis propria of the fundus wall. And the feeder would be here. So you're hitting the feeder here and then you're getting all the fundic varices, which you see endoscopically here. That's why EUS is so important for the treatment of fundic varices, because if you rely on endoscopy, you're only seeing the tip of the iceberg, which is what you see from this side, but you don't see what's going on inside the wall here. So it's a nice demonstration of how you differentiate fundic from cardia or junctional varices. Two different, completely different types of varices. Okay.